Just make it fill the screen. Is it better? <coughs> now it's in presenter mode, <laughs> so you can see the page. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just make this fill out the screen, that's all. Just pull it, make, maximize it. Is it bigger now? I think this is good. Okay. You maximize the width, now maximize the height as well. Yeah, but I have a very large screen, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is better if you pull it up. Okay. So here is our agenda, uh, not too packed, but uh, we may have a more long discussion for the latest draft uh, based on the exchange we had on the list for so for the um, IGMP MLD uh, proxy draft. So we kept this draft at the end uh, to um, uh, keep the maximum amount of time uh, for uh, for the discussion. Working group status, um, no new RFC published since the last uh, IETF. We still have two documents in the RFC editor queue, mainly due to uh, uh, some um, dependent documents uh, that are, uh, uh, I think DCI EVPN overlay is still waiting for the tunnel on caps uh, to be closed. An EVPN prefix advertisement is uh, uh, waiting for the intercept net forwarding uh, to also be uh, to also be closed. Uh, so the, for this intercept net forwarding document, um, we are still pending some updates from uh, from the offers on this one. Uh, we still have uh, documents under ISG review and. For especially for the NSH BGP control plane document, I think uh, Adrian, you still have to provide some replies um, on, on the comments coming from the ISG. Adrian? Adrian, can, can you provide some updates? I literally joined as uh, asking me um, and using my name. What are you asking about? Oh, on the NSH BGP control plane, there was a couple of comments coming from the ISG, and we have a reply, in fact. Uh, okay, I'll look. I thought I handled it, but I'll, I'll check. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see a name already in working group uh, status. In queue, is there uh, someone wants to put some comment? Uh, I see Italo Busi has written a name in working group status that there is some question. You can go ahead. Okay, let's, yeah, let's continue. Okay, we have a couple of documents uh, in Shepherd Review, uh, especially uh, the unequal cost load balancing. So I have um, provided my review. Um, the main issue with this draft is that it relies on some of the uh, uh, link bandwidth uh, community, and this draft uh, is still expired for the moment. 
so I reached out via the offers and um, uh, they will try to, uh, to see um, how to uh, to revive the um, uh, link bandwidth document and update it uh, to uh, uh, to accommodate the changes required by uh, the unequal cost balancing draft. Uh, the <coughs> virtual Ethernet segment uh, still requires a new region. Uh, MSD, MSDP SA interoperation. Um, I think, Mongkamana, uh, you are done with the review on this one? Yeah, I, ha I have completed the review. I just need to submit the write up, and most probably I'll do it today or tomorrow. Okay. Uh, as for the EVPN PrevDF, uh, I also provided my uh, my review, but I haven't seen any reply yet from uh, from the offers. Okay, we still have a couple of documents in uh, the working group last call queue. Um, the good thing is that we are. Uh, uh, the queue has uh, reduced uh, from uh, from the last uh, from the last status, uh, so it's a uh, it's a good thing. But we still have a couple of documents to uh, to proceed uh, to proceed, and we will start uh, right after this uh, this IETF meeting. Uh, some updates we got uh, on the working group document. Uh, so the multicast flow DF election, uh, we need to close the IGP proxy draft first. Uh, fast DF recovery, we need an update from, uh, uh, from the offers on this one. And data center gateway, uh, I think Adrian, this one is also on your side. Could you try to give me an update on uh, the data center gateway? Uh, yes, I. So this this one had been bouncing backwards and forwards between me and you, um, trying to um, resolve a, a, a final question, and mm. uh, um, probably the best uh, approach to this is that if we can uh, carve out. 10 minutes between us to actually talk and um, and get conclusion on that last point. Okay. Okay, let's do that. I'll, I'll pin you. Okay. 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 Um, EVP and VPWS FXC, nothing special to mention. Regarding the Yang models, uh, discussing with um, uh, the, uh, the editors, the main uh, issue with the documents is that uh, we, it seems that there is no implementation yet uh, on this, of this Yang model, and even there is no, uh, at least we are not aware of any prototype. Uh, so the question is, do we want to move forward uh, the document, publish them as, uh, as RFCs without having um, implementation? Uh, probably it may be too risky. There are a lot of interdependencies uh, between the models. Um, at least in my opinion, I think it may be better to wait at least to get some feedback from people prototyping uh, uh, and so on. Uh, this may help um, to ensure that uh, uh, what we are provide currently providing in, uh, in this draft is, uh, uh, is correct and can really, be, um, can really be implemented. So yeah, if people uh, uh, agree on that, we would like to, uh, to hold on on this draft uh, until there are some uh, uh, implementation of prototypes. So, uh, if people are aware of any prototype, say, feel free to share. So, this is Manchu here. Um, there is, at least from our side, at least here from the CNS side, we do have, we don't have a complete implementation, but we do have some versions of the implementations for L2VPN as well as for EVPN. I, I think you what you are right is that there is a lot of interdependencies between the L2VPN and EVPN. 
uh, and uh, network instance and all other stuff we we do need to uh, sort those uh, relationship out uh, and and but we i think what does need to happen that we need to you know we need to put the document out people are maybe not comfortable implementing something that is in the, in the draft status so i think we we need to make a progress and and um, bring it to the rsc status so we can so that more vendors would uh, would do, do the implementation. That, that's my take on that. Uh, I think that's okay. On the... okay, but you, you see also the um, the other side that if we publish uh, as RFC and we discover that um, the model is broken in some way, we will have to publish a new, a new RFC to uh, to correct it. This has happened already with. Uh, with a couple of young models, but uh, my point is, if we can try to avoid this, uh, that will also be better. But I, I, I am, I understand also your point. Maybe what what we can do is uh, we can take it to uh, to the to see uh, how, how we can proceed. Uh, you, are you suggest? Uh, well, it is not in the broken status as as of now. I mean, it is that there are some loose ends that we need to tie it up. Uh, mm. and 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 i think one of the aspect of that is to provide um, an appendix that shows uh, an example on how you would configure an l2 vpn or an evpn you know what would you support as an example and that would make it a lot more clearer as to how this model can be implemented and also it would make it a little more clearer if there are any loose ends then we said okay yeah we need to hide these things up so that exercise we do need to go through. Um, it it just yeah it just uh, taking longer to get to it. Um, so uh, yeah, that, well, Patrice is online. Hey, Patrice, what do you think? He's uh, he's leading the EVPN aspect of it. Um, yeah, I think we need now to prove that the pudding is working. So I would agree with you uh, that we need to have maybe um, an appendix explaining how that's going to get uh, programmed. You, sorry, I didn't get exactly what you were saying. Should we put an example I, aspects of it, or yeah, yes. do we need yeah, to bring something? Yeah, example would be important, right? We discussed about that uh, Manchu a while back, and I think this is something that. Uh, that we need to uh, just show and yeah. so people understand how it works and then people can provide comments if they are happy and then if they are happy then we can release exactly right right i that's it. That, i think and it will also help us identify any gaps right just uh, uh, can we give a turn to people on the queue please uh, i see jeff uh, jeffrey has and italo busy in the queue Italo, you can go ahead, please. We can't hear you. Uh, Jeff, you want to go next, please? Uh, I see you You have written name for Yang models. Yes. Uh, so, me, everybody can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I, I have done no contributory work towards the L3VPN model I got added to. I was sort of ambushed into helping with the model a little bit. Uh, but the comment I do want to make on the Yang models in general, and part of why I got added to the L3VPN model, was that each of these things are built on top of uh, <clears throat> services that, in many cases, that run on top of BGP. The BGP model itself was not in good shape until you know, roughly the last uh, six, nine months. Uh, I've been working very heavily with the uh, ritual authors on that draft uh, to try to make sure that the contents of the BGP model are clean. And we have spent the last uh, couple of sessions worth of editing, working on some of the structural issues. The last set of uh, issues that I've identified for them that need to be uh, dealt with are what I tend to call inner work uh, issues. Uh, it's perfectly fine to create a model that's standalone, but it doesn't do you a lot of good unless it actually works for the things that it needs to work with. So in the case of you know, these VPN models, 
there is interactions with you know, BGP in terms of some of its operational configuration state. There's interactions with policy, which is a model that's maintained by a routing working group right now. So my recommendation for this working group on these models is part of the exercise you're talking about to the appendices of try to use the things, try to figure out what the config state looks like, try to figure out what the operational state looks like. Can you actually get your work done? That's common for a VPN network. And if you can't, that's usually either because there's some structural or content uh, issue in the model itself, or potentially there's a missing component that should be supplied externally. You know, so like Stefan and I have uh, spoken before about uh, where the AFI SAFI stuff is maintained and who owns that piece, that's still to be resolved. But now that the BGP model is sort of stabilized, I think that answer could be happening very soon. But it does mean that uh, for each of these models, I suspect there'll be policy components and you need to go to routing working group to make sure that uh, your issues are dealt with there. And if there's issues with the BGP model, uh, I and the other co-authors will happily take further feedback on that. Can I respond to that? I bet. So, so I, I think that I, I don't think we should have too much interdependencies between, uh, I mean, yes, the uh, L2 VPN and especially the EVPN uses the BGP, uh, but as far as the policies, I wouldn't go too far into uh, you know what, what uh, all the policies that are related to the BGP be brought into or have created dependency within the VPN for the policies, BGP policies, right? As long as we just have the route targets, import exports, and all that, uh, and, and uh, uh, the BGP session related stuff, I think we should try not to have put too much interdependencies. Otherwise, this will never get completed. Uh, there is an LDP and for pseudo wires and all that stuff, right? If I could have the follow up on that, uh, there'll be a brief one. Same, please. Uh, so that later. Again, Jeffrey has. Uh, I, I agree that minimizing interdependencies is good. I agree that not trying to be completely uh, feature complete for some vendors implementation of policy is probably a right thing. The policy modules that are being written across the IETF are mostly trying to provide necessary hooks so that vendor implementations can do their job. Again, my request is that as everybody goes through their various models, so I'm gonna pick on EVPN as a specific example. EVPN does interact with policy for things like DCI and for things like uh, you know the EVPN replacement for effectively L3 VPN. If you cannot do standard operational behaviors in your model, even as a future extension, it means your model is not structured right. So worry about your structuring issues and figuring out what the requirements are everything falls from there. Okay. So I take your, this is Imanshu again. I take your comments. I think we are trying to come up with a base EVPN with, uh, because EVPN has just lots and lots and lots of features. So if we, we cannot keep up with, uh, with uh, all, all those features, accommodate them. But you are right. We need to put structure in place. So if we want to extend later, uh, there are right hooks available. So comment on behalf of Italo because he is not able to, uh, I think we can't hear him. So his comment is that we need to coordinate with uh, OPSA working group regarding L2 VPN, L3 VPN Yang model and L2 NM, L3 NM Yang models. Okay, I would request for Italo to send exact comments on what aspects of uh, uh, we should look for in the other OPSA working group or that would be helpful, right? Yeah, so next I think Susan uh, is in queue for Yang model. Yeah, very briefly because uh, we I'll are- be brief. be brief. If once you answered Jeff's question, I would also like you to describe if you anticipate versioning, how you're going to do the versioning to pick up the policy you cut out the first time. See the net uh, 
uh, mod versioning discussions. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's finish the working group status. Uh, we have couples of um, new working group documents uh, since the last uh, ITF. Uh, the last one, um, I think Matthew, you pulled the, uh, you did the poll on this one, and there is a consensus to adopt, but the adoption has not uh, really occurred yet. But uh, the adoption should be okay. And we still have three documents um, for which authors have required the, uh, the working group uh, adoption, so we will see and proceed uh, accordingly. Okay, let's start with our agenda. Gaurav, you are the first one. Yeah, hi, Stefan. Hi, folks. This is Gaurav Davra. Um, I'll be covering the SRV6 BGB services. Thanks, Mankanma, for adding me to the first slot. A meeting right after this. So let's get to it. Um, next slide. So as we know, um, this document panel covers the signaling for all the uh, AFs, L3 VPN, B4 V6, global and eVPN. Next slide, please. So this kind of lists the draft progress. We first presented it IDR in IETF 98, um, and then we introduced the eVPN in IDR in IETF 101. We presented the document in 104, in uh, BESS, uh, the entirety, um, we also took the comments from the working group regarding the update packaging optimization and represented it at 105. And then we adopted the document just before 106. So uh, what is the update in this document? Um, Pretty much the document um, is the same. We have added some clarifications based on the comments which we have received and working closely with various vendors and authors. Um, we have um, added the multiple SID, SID, SID signaling just to provide the flexibility for the same route. Um, we have added a mechanism, of course, which, we, which has been mentioned earlier about the transposition scheme so that uh, to update the more optimized packaging and the details of that has been added. There are some examples which have been added for both eVPN and for L3VPN. Um, there was some ambiguity around the next stop handling and SID reachability. So there was a clarify, clarification text which has been added for L3 services on how we handle the next stop um, for both next stop unchanged and next stop changed cases. Um, and also the text about the route SID reachability um, clarification. Um, as the error handling, uh, we for this particular TLV, we have also clarified um, about um, how to handle if there is a if there is a formatting issue uh, to treat it as a withdraw, <clears throat> and that has been added in the document as well in the error handling section. There was, uh, based on uh, the implementation and the uh, comments which we have received and working closely with uh, some of the vendors on, uh, on the eVPN signaling part, we have added the clarifications for the route type three handling and also added the text regarding the um, optimized uh, packaging for eVPN signaling as well. And then, um, this this was kind of missing from the document the local bias method which is 
um, following the same um, EVP and base procedures, um, but we have added the text on how the local bias is also um, handled for SRV6. So that has been included um, in the document. Um, there, have, there are a few editorial changes, and this is just purely to um, make sure there is a there is a improved document flow um, and adding all the required changes based on the feedback and implementation uh, learnings, which we have done um, over the past uh, past uh, few years um, and also working closely with with both um, with multiple vendors. So. We have uh, reordered some section just to improve the document flow, and that is purely just the reordering and there is no any other specific changes. Um, we have also added the TNV encoding, uh, which is added before the uh, services signaling section. Of course, we have updated the references for 5549. Um, there are some redundant text which was there for L3 services um, and for uh, some EVPN part, so we have we have removed that from the common sections and moved it to the appropriate uh, base bits. Regarding the IANA uh, early allocation, uh, we requested for the working group early allocations uh, March third, just before this me meeting yesterday. AC actually approved it, so thanks AC for. For that, we request for the formalization of these allo allocations code points, please, uh, so that uh, you know this this can be uh, this can be completed. Uh, and these are the suggested code points which were requested. Now, regarding the implementation um, and also the deployment, this document is widely uh, deployed um, and implemented from multiple vendors. There are some implementations which are already in production. So we have uh, or, and, and shipping. Uh, we have Cisco, which in, in multiple Cisco platforms, it's it's implemented in its entirety. We have um, Huawei, uh, which has also implemented it. And there are other vendors which we know of are already working on on the document uh, implementation and working closely with us. Um, there is also open source implementations uh, in Linux kernel and also in FDIO. Um, there are multiple deployment deployments for segment routing uh, uh, services document in uh, with SoftBank, China Telecom. Um, China Unicom and multiple other vendors, as you can see, and there was a multiple vendor interop, which was which was done at uh, EN Tech. Uh, there are more details. This document below has been implemented, uh, updated to mention all the implementation details. So, if somebody's interested, please please feel free to look at that document. There are quite a few many, so I didn't mention everything over here. Um, next steps, um, since there are multiple implementations and deployments and this document has been um, around, we are requesting and preparing for the last call um, request for this document um, around uh, Metrid 108. And again, um, if there are any reviews and comments about the document, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we will be happy to work with you. Thank you. Okay, Monkamana, do we have some people or? I don't see any queue, so we can go to the next. Okay. Monkamana, I will drop off after this, okay? Thanks. Yeah, sure. okay, okay, Linda, you're the next speaker. So, okay, I sent you an updated slides. If you have, can you use that one instead? Um, I have to check. I have downloaded. I have downloaded. Okay. I just want just um, um. Anyway, I can use this one. It's okay. So this um, draft uh, has been presented in last two IETFs, I think, and it's mainly to describe how do we use uh, BGP for SD1 case. So this is 
um, this slide is basically showing the, the key items being discussed. So mainly to encourage more people to read it is um, not that complicated. We follow the same format as RFC 8388. Um, that one described how um, EGP used for EDPN. And so here we just have three major parts. One is the use cases and requirement. And the second part is um, the BGP walkthrough to show how different BGP update messages are carried through the network. Uh, um, third part is um, the packet walkthrough. Um, so I here encourage people to read it uh, because we really want to um, call for working group adoption. Next slide, please. Okay, so for, for SD1, some of the key um, characteristics of SD1. Primarily, SD1, we all know, is overlay network, right? So basically, augment the network. Um, the, the, the underlay network can be many different kinds and can traverse multiple segments of a network belonging to different operators. Um, and there could be multiple parallel paths over different underlays. Um, second one, which is not very related to routing area, is about um, um, internet breakout. And today, many corporations, like um, they have traffic. Like my company here, we route all the traffic to um, Santa Clara office before we can go out to the internet because all the policies are enforced over there. So in many of the SD1 deployments, it is very highly desirable to distribute the policies to individual sites. Uh, so the internet breakout can happen right there to improve the performance. So the second one. The third one is um, um, some of the applications need to be um, forwarded based on the application ID instead of um, destination ID. So those are the three char key characteristics of the ST1 network. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, so um, in SD1, there could be like um, many instances on they call segmentations. Um, so for a particular um, edge node, they may need to support SD1 instance for um, a customer for client one, or maybe need to create uh, support another instance for um, a different client. It's very much like uh, VPN, VIF. And the only difference is, is not VPN, it's really over the uh, maybe untrusted network or over IPsec tunnels. So, um, um, so because there are similarity, we advocate for using similar approach as uh, uh, VPNs, right? VPN has the route target to represent different route instances. We can use the similar extended community to represent different SD1 target ID so that um, they can, the receiver can put the advertisement uh, update into appropriate um, um, routing table. And also that um, um, the SD1 instance ID need to be carried by the payload. So um, here we are advocating that um, the, we can use similar approach um, to carry the VPN uh, as VPN ID being carried by the NLRI path attributes. Um, we can use similar approach like um, um, uh, SAFI 128 and the route distinguisher to dis distinguish routes in case different um, clients may use their own private addresses, may collide with each other. Um, so that's um, how we can achieve um, separating different SD1 instances belonging to different clients. Next page, please. Um, another key um, part is um, SD1 network can be deployed in very large scale in, in a way that geographically in many different locations. And for each location, each of the devices, the edge nodes may be only uh, interested in very, very small number of uh, uh, instances. Like if, you, if I have an SD1 um, device deployed in a small uh, shopping mall, he probably only interested in one or two instances. Um, but the SD1 network itself may consist of um, 
hundreds of instances. So it is very important that um, the propagation of the update has to be constrained. So um, BGP has a really good um, um, a property to constrain the route propagation. Um, this is RFC 4684 to constrain the, uh, the BGP update. So if you are CP1, for example, you only have uh, maybe one inst ST1 instance interested. You can just tell your uh, corresponding route reflector, hey, I'm only interested in the green instance. And then CP2 is only interested in green instance and versus CP10 is interested in blue. It could be one CP interest in both um, instances. Then the update will be sent, both update will be sent to them. So by constraining them, we can reduce great number of control messages floating in the network. Um, of course, for smaller scale deployment, it is also possible to manually set up the, the policy on where you want to distribute. So that's just menu uh, static method. Next slide, please. Um, here I'm just walking through how we use BGP to propagate the properties of the SD1 edge. And in this example, what is the epithelia? Who is not speaking? Can you please mute? Uh, I think Gyan, can you please mute? Okay. So, so this um, scenario basically um, for a text routes, multiple routes, uh, we can use one IP set tunnel, regardless of which network it comes from. Um, so, with this, is very simple. You just, uh, as a traditional Manila SAFI one. IP and to say, hey, the, here are the prefixes and here are the some of the tunnel attributes. Of course, you have to be able to indicate what kind of IP set properties you support as like CP2. When he announced the property, he has to say what kind of algorithm he support, what kind of encryption he support, and what kind of public key he support sent to the raw reflector. And the raw reflector were based on um, the interested group propagated to CP3 and CP2, uh, CP1. So that's a very simple uh, case of using BGP to advocate, uh, propagate the, the, the SD1 um, uh, attached routes. Next, please. So in this case, it's about uh, supporting different topologies. And um, the one topology, one uh, case of SD1 is like, see here we have um, a red um, route, right? The VLAN 25 and uh, prefix 22.1.1 slash 24. So this route is only to be distributed to CP3, not to CP2. Um, in other routes, the blue route is only to CP1. To achieve this purpose, um, you can, the CP2, the origin of the uh, announcement, basically um, put two separate BGP messages to the, uh, to the route reflector. One is to um, indicate the blue tunnel, and this blue tunnel is only to be uh, propagated to CP1. Another one is the red tunnel, that one is only to be distributed to CP3. So by doing this, you practically create a different topology for the SD1 because SD1 can be over very different geographic locations. Controlling the topology can is currently actually a big challenge. BGP is great in, in creating that, make it possible. Um, next slide, please. So um, this one is, um, um, Actually, th this is where I made a mistake here. Um, this is fine grant um, um, tunnels, meaning for every prefix, um, they, they need to have separate tunnels. Then we need two, uh, three separate messages for three of the prefixes. So basically in the first update, we'll only have the first uh, um, uh, 
a client route, 10 dot one. And then second message uh, will have the VLAN 15. The third message is the prefix 12 dot one. So I'm sorry, this one, I made a mistake. I sent an update the slide. Hopefully you will upload that one. So this just showing that if you, um, for this particular deployment, you want different tunnels for different prefixes, and then you can use BGP, this kind of BGP to, to achieve that. Next one. Okay, so, so the, for the application-based segmentation in SD1, um, BGP is great to achieve that. So the use case is really like in many of the uh, um, retail um, space using the SD1. Uh, the payroll, the payment uh, traffic can only go to the payment gateway uh, versus other traffic are, uh, can be going to any other nodes. So it is very strictly enforced. Um, the payment goes to the payment gateway. By using BGP, we can achieve this kind of topology. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this just walks through using the BGP, basically for the red route, and you send an uh, update to the route reflector, and the route reflector will send, uh, propagate that into the uh, payment gateway for the red. And then for the others, um, the second update will be distributed to all other nodes. So that's how we use BGP to achieve the uh, application-based segmentation topology. Next one, please. Um, this is just uh, some other um, um, uh, uh, optimization you can achieve um, because um, to uh, create a mesh peer-to-peer uh, -peer IPsec tunnel uh, can be troublesome uh, for some deployment. So instead of um, creating everything is based on client-based creating those um, IPsec tunnel for each uh, client route, uh, it's possible to treat IPsec tunnel as the transport pipe so that um, um, the, the IPsec tunnel is, um, is treated exactly same as uh, a pipe between two nodes. The traffic can be transported either over IPsec tunnel or over um, the VPN and POS. This is assuming for the CPE node themselves um, they actually have different type of um, um, underlay network attached. And this what um, okay, next slide, please. Okay, Linda, you just have to start. Yeah, good. What is that? You just have two minutes. Please. Oh, okay, sorry for that. Okay, so this just anal analyzes the pros and cons of um, um, this approach. Um, the pro is reducing the number of IPsec tunnels in the network. The, the trouble is um, uh, each node has to be able to uh, terminate the tunnel and then transmit forward to the next node. Next slide, please. So that's the end. Okay, so here we are calling for a working group adoption um, because we think this draft is very helpful for the industry, uh, for other organizations like MAF, Metro Internet Forum, BBF, they all have SD1 project to show to them that, hey, the BGP is very well suited to scale SD1. I think it will be very good um, document um, uh, for other organizations, for the industry. Okay, that's it. Okay. Is there any... <laughs> I don't see any skills, so we can move to next. And while uh, Stephen is pulling the next slide, uh, guys who have not signed the blue sheet, please uh, write it in the etherpad. I have a, I have sent the link again on the chat. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Qing Wu. I'm here to present the uh, network and VPN service performance monitoring young data model draft. The name we list here are also this draft. And uh, next. Yeah, uh, just a little bit of background. What is this draft about, actually? This draft uh, defines a young data model that can provide end-to-end -end network performance monitoring 
in addition, it can also can provide a VPN service uh, performance monitoring. So foundation for this work uh, is uh, performance management methodology that uh, already be proposed for the Ethernet network, RP network, and MPLS network. We can use this uh, performance management methodology to uh, connect the, the performance data to build the, the data source. And uh, but uh, how these performance data can be aggregated and uh, uh, exposed to the uh, upper layer, this is something we really want to address in this draft. Next. So, uh, what is current status of this draft? This uh, draft is not a new draft. We already presented uh, for twice. Actually, the first we presented in uh, Best Working Wood, actually in IETF 103. And we got a lot of uh, support for this draft, and uh, it actually be put in the candidate for working group adoption. Also, we, uh, in the uh, previous uh, IETF meeting in Singapore, we presented this draft in TIS working group, trying to make sure uh, uh, there's, uh, there's no overlapping with the T8 performance management related work. And uh, update, uh, since uh, the last version, we actually uh, added two new authors, uh, Mohammed from Orange and Oscar from Telefonica, as the two new uh, co -author. And based there, input, actually, we add VPN summary statics at the network level. And we, uh, so in this model, not only we uh, model the parameter for the performance metric, but also we model how the performance metric are measured and connected. So we add the reference time and the measurement interval, and uh, to use this as the uh, reference time uh, uh, to do the performance data aggregation. And in, ad in addition, actually, we replace uh, uh, average performance data, such as uh, delay value or jitter value, with the uh, percentile uh, value, because we think uh, percentile performance data value can well reflect the worst behavior of nano performance. And also, we make a according change for the young data model code. Yeah, next. Uh, next page. Oh, uh, yeah. So what, what is the use cases? I, I think the typical use case is the real-time uh, VPN service monitoring. Uh, we, uh, as a customer or, or the operator, they don't care uh, what kind of uh, performance measurement method you are used in the underlying network. They care about uh, what, what, what uh, they more care about it, well, what is end-to-end -end network performance or VPN service performance. Suppose you. Uh, except the interconnection between uh, uh, several VPN sites, you care about uh, what is the uh, latency or packet loss, or what is the uh, bandwidth between uh, two VPN sites when you inject the traffic from one VPN site to another VPN site. So uh, we actually can uh, measure per link uh, performance measurement uh, data uh, using existing uh, uh, performance measurement methodology, and we can actually uh, you leverage the uh, managing plane telemetry mechanism, such as Young Push or some other mechanism, to uh, export this performance management data and to the managing plane to the upper layer. The upper layer can do the aggregation uh, and aggregate this performance management data to uh, uh, provide end to end uh, performance management results. Also, they can leverage it like a pass computation method to, uh, to calculate this. Uh, performance measurement data, such as end-to-end -end latency, end-to-end -end packet loss. And uh, with this performance measurement data, they can optimize the uh, network uh, and uh, build the closed-loop uh, network management. So these are key use cases. Next. So uh, to provide the network perform end-to-end uh, -end, uh, network performance uh, uh, monitoring, actually, we also need to establish the relationship between the, uh, the service topology and underlay topology. This is show example of how this uh, relationship can be used. And uh, so we can uh, connect the, the uh, basic uh, performance measurement data in the underlying network. And uh, with this uh, uh, relationship between each other, and we can actually uh, aggregate the data uh, uh, to provide end-to-end -end network performance uh, uh, monitoring. Next. Uh, 
So this is a model structure we propose actually. Uh, so uh, compared with the previous version, we had a few new parameter. Uh, actually, this new parameter actually in red uh, circle actually. Uh, so the parameter we propose uh, like a VP, uh, VPN summary statics, we put it at the network level. So the basically this model uh, design actually is augmented from the RTOS network topology model that has already published as RFC. And uh, in addition, we add uh, some of uh, other parameter to uh, like uh, reference time and uh, measurement interval reference time actually show uh, when the performance data uh, start to, to measure the, the measurement interval to show how often, how frequently the performance data can be measured. So this can be served as a reference uh, time to, to help you to, to provide, provide the end-to-end -end performance measurement data. Um, so in addition, actually, we replace uh, the average uh, value, uh, average performance metrics such as uh, uh, latency, delay, uh, and jitter uh, with the percentile uh, value because uh, based on the discussion, we, we think uh, uh, percentile value can well, uh, well reflect uh, the worst uh, case of the network performance. So we use percentile values. Uh, that's uh, the, the change we, we made compared with the previous version. Next. So, uh, so we we actually get the, the performance measurement data. Actually, you need to uh, export this data to the upper layer. So, uh, either you can use the Young Push uh, uh, Management Telemetry Mechanism to subscribe the, the performance measurement data you are interested in, and uh, the, and then the device network device can uh, to publish the data uh, uh, in uh, continuously way. Uh, in addition, actually, we can uh, uh, allow the uh, the pooling based mechanism. You can define the customized RPC. You can actually query the performance data you are interested, in. and uh, so we can allow both both uh, way to uh, recharge this performance measurement data. Next. So for the next step, we, we think that this job has been around for a while. We actually already presented for, for twice, actually. We think that uh, talk, uh, talking with uh, our colleagues, we think that this job is in good shape for, for working group adoption. Uh, that's all. Thank you. I don't see anyone in queue, so we can go to the next. No, I, I still have uh, Stefan Kowski speaking as a chair. Still have one question. Um, probably uh, Martin can um, can also um, can also help uh, in this. Um, so your document is uh, defining a lot of um, uh, performance metrics, and I'm still wondering if we could uh, leverage on uh, uh, on some existing work uh, that is defining such performance metric because your performance metric are not. Uh, tied specifically to VPN, it's, I think it could be applicable to uh, uh, to many performance measurement use case. Uh, that's why I'm still wondering if it's a, a good thing to have this performance match, at least some of these performance metrics defined in this draft, or if uh, someone else in another working group should um, define this performance metric that you could potentially potentially reuse. Because I don't uh, think that it's know. really the uh, best working group yeah. job to, to define modeling of performance measurements. I, I, uh, I, the applicability so to I, VPN, yes, it applies to BES, but uh, the performance metrics itself, except if it's something which is really specific to a VPN, uh, yeah, I, I just want to uh, to have uh, over working group in a, in ITF trying to redefine something that you currently have. Uh, uh, Stefano, answer your question. I, I think uh, for this job, uh, we we actually don't uh, define any new uh, performance metric. Uh, we just uh, reuse uh, the performance metric that uh, uh, you know be uh, proposed in maybe existing working group actually using the performance metric methodology. Here we focus on the performance metric reporting, monitoring. Actually, uh, how these uh, these performance data can be uh, exposed to to the upper layer. This is uh, our focus. So, I'm not sure we actually define any new performance metric. 
uh, I, yeah, I agree, but, uh, actually, performance may, if we may, define uh, any new performance measures, it, it, they, should be defined, they should be defined in some uh, relevant working group, like RPPM or some MPO. Yeah, but uh, but uh, uh, as I ma mentioned in, in the uh, background slides, actually, we, we don't target to define any new performance metric. Actually, for uh, a VPN related parameter, we in the latest version, we add a VPN summary static. This is something related to the VPN. Uh, so, uh, I, so, I think are that, you, uh, so are you currently you reusing some uh, uh, Yang models coming from IPPM? Uh, we we leverage their performance measurement uh, me, me, me methodology. They propose uh, uh, this, this can be yeah, reused but actually. It's, it's, yeah, but it's not a matter of uh, only methodology. Methodology is okay, but I'm also talking about uh, all the Yang leaves and containers that you can use that may be reusable for other use cases. Uh, the, the performance metric, uh, actually, this is some data we can use in Yang to, to model that, actually. Uh, uh, young model just just a tool. Actually, they they focus on the uh, you know performance monitoring. How how to you know export this kind of performance matter to to the app layer. So I I, I think uh, I'm not sure that that's our focus to define any new performance metric. You know, I already clarified in the background slides. You know, this uh, be presented in, in previous uh, meeting. You know about this. You know they. So the, I I see there is a question from uh, Avi. Avitovsky, can you please uh, come to the mic? Uh, I don't, uh, what, what is the question uh, in, the, in the chat window? Sorry, I was, I was speaking to me. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, along the same same lines, I, would, uh, I wanted to ask uh, with regards to these. So, I guess you're proposing to, to sort of uh, um, sort of extend the sort of topology young model with, uh, with the ability to sort of take some 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 measurements or maybe define some KPIs for 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 some of the components there. And I was I was thinking, well, the the name of the draft says VPN sort of performance statistics, and uh, and yeah, these yeah. seem like general type of statistics related to sort of for which then yeah, can be reused. Right. This chapter actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we propose a generic performance measurement uh, monitoring uh, model. Actually, this not only can be applied uh, applicable to Air 3 VPN, but also can be applicable to Air 2 VPN. Actually, this this is a, uh, you know just a, you know it's a common building blocker that can be you know applied to ma many VPN uh, service model. Right, so you're sort of like yeah, proposing a our... sort of like a generic extension to the, or sort of like a set of uh, maybe KPIs or, or, or values that, that could be measured with, with some, some KPIs set in there. Because I'm thinking, you know, like for, for L3 VPN service, I mean, you could, you could have, you know, one type of service can have a different, you know, SLAs or KPIs from from different type of service. And, and uh, I'm just wondering, you know, like how, how would you sort of, Generalize uh, or extend these, you know, models uh, so that you could sort of marry up what is going on in, say, say uh, L3 uh, VPN service model with the uh, expected sort of um, uh, performance characteristics of that service once instantiated. I, I, I think the design principle is we can use uh, Air 3 VPN performance metric as a basis and we try to make it uh, extensible to cover some other cases like Air 2 VPN. So you, you can see actually this uh, uh, the, the the API we propose actually not only can be applied to the IP uh, network but also can be applied to the MPLs network. So we we try to generalize this, but the the basis actually is you know. Use air survey PM uh, performance metric. Actually, this is a, not a new metric we propose. Actually, we just uh, leverage the exi existing performance metric. We can do the aggregation to to expose uh, to the management. Uh, so, because uh, in upper layer they only uh, they, they care about the, the end to end performance metric or, 
our town level about metrics. Okay, so, so, sorry, but we are we are out of time for uh, for this discussion. So please continue uh, on the list. We have to move forward. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jan. Again, can you hear us? Hello, can you hear us? Maybe even pull up my slide. Meanwhile, he when he comes up. Okay, let's move to the next one. Yeah, so we can go to the first slide. Okay. Next. So this slide, uh, this draft was presented again in IETF 106. And as I had mentioned during 106 that we already had working group last call done for this, and it was past working group last call. When Jorge uh, came up with comment that there is a field in route type eight which says sequence number, but draft doesn't say anything about what to do with the sequence number. And after that, we had a couple of meetings across vendor and authors, and there were a lot of discussion during IETF 106 uh, in the halls, and we had uh, some of the discussion going on with different vendors over email as well. Uh, next slide. So one of the main challenge which we uh, faced with this draft was there were two set of implementation out in the field, and one of with sequence number and one was without sequence number. So now all the discussions were happening that how to make sure or which direction this draft should go and how each vendor can interrupt without any problem. So there were multiple options were discussed across different vendors. So one of the options which I, I had presented uh, during last IETF was removing sequence number four byte from the route type eight. And the impact of this change would have been now since we are saying that there are already implementation who have sequence number included, so route reflector has to had to make sure that it can understand both length and it can reflect both. Now there are some implementation where uh, individual PEs they do session flap in case they don't understand uh, the routes. So there were chances that even all the PEs has to understand both of the length which was with sequence number and without sequence number. The second options which were uh, under discussion were moving this four byte to reserve field because every author and almost everyone in the working group, they do agree that there is a no real use case for uh, sequence number in route type eight. So there is no point keeping a four byte field as a sequence number, which has uh, no use. So alternate option was moving it as a reserve field and I'll always make it zero. And now the impact will be for the vendors who don't have these uh, sequence number included already in NLRI, it has to be included. Third option which came uh, during recent discussion in uh, mailing list was having complete new code point. So we keep route type eight as is and slowly deprecate it and get new code point which will have a route defined without sequence number and slowly we migrate to the new code point but with this option challenges where we were while we were having discussion internally and with some other vendors that if we go this path it is it is little complex that we will have to support both of them initially and then slowly maybe have some configs knob to make sure that it moves from one of the implementation to other implementation. So the 
basically a new complexity getting added for vendor as well as operators. So next slide. <clears throat> After evaluating all these three options and the impact, it, it is for sure that whichever solution we pick, everyone has to do some kind of modification to their current implementation. And uh, there are, uh, we had already checked with a couple of vendors and each of them have some variation of implementation already. So we are, uh, we are proposing that maybe the one of the way to go about it is making this four byte as a reserve field and it will not be part of key and sender will always send it as a zero and receiver is going to uh, ignore this if we go this route uh, next slide so what are the possible uh, changes for each each of the vendor and this list, uh, there are two things that this list may not be the complete list. It is only based on our discussions. We, I did try to reach out through our mailing list plus Nanog list to see that which all other vendors have implementation of route type seven and eight. So only these are the vendors where I could get positive response. And again, the expected change, which I have written, it is very high level change because every vendor might have different kind of design and their change may be depending on what design they have internally. So for Cisco, so right, right, right now Cisco implementation is without sequence number. And if we go this, uh, if we accept this chain, so now Cisco has to change its implementation where it will send and reflect route type 8 with 4 byte of reserve field and this 4 byte of reserve field will not be part of uh, key anymore. For Juniper, Juniper already does send sequence number. So I'm a high level, I don't see any change, but internally it may be changed from uh, key to non-key. For Nokia, based on our uh, last discussion during IETF 106 and couple of meetings, they did implement that they will send by default, they will send without sequence number. And uh, they can accept both, both of the format, which is with sequence number and without sequence number. So as of today, it, their implementation will work fine, but maybe they may want to go the route where uh, they change this, uh, they add four bit, bytes of reserve field. And Arista has already implementation where they actually have both implementation and they control it using CLI now, where uh, they can have, they can originate with sequence number, without sequence number, and they can reflect both of them. So even for them, as of today, there may not be any change other than uh, some internal uh, change about moving from non-key to uh, key to non-key. And again, these changes are completely from the high level. Each vendor uh, can speak on their own behalf that how their changes are going to look like. Uh, next slide. So I think that's all I had. And if there are any questions, let me see in the queue. So I see John is in the queue, John. Um, thank you for, uh, for the update. Um, I just wanted to briefly say that that seems um, completely fine to me. Um, and uh, it, it addresses substantially all of my concerns anyway. I, I'm, I'm good with it. Thank you. Uh, when I see you in the queue. So my... Um... Hello, can you hear me? So um, change, I, I just like to um, request the, um, the current type to be reserved because uh, I mean reserve in a sense is still show up in the draft because uh, it has always been in the draft and then because of that the implementation as you said based working on the draft to in order to uh, provide interop um, 
procedure. So people two or three years down the road, they need to understand their implementation, which has been implemented based on the type NNI type with the sequence number. So to be clearly documented in the draft. Can I um, add a comment? This is John again. Yeah, sure. Uh, that, I, I think based on your on your presentation, that's what you were saying, is that the, the draft would continue to show the field there and it would just uh, uh, label it as uh, reserved rather than sequence number, right? Yes, so it will be changed to reserve plus it will be not part of key anymore. Uh, so may I comment on that? S in the future, way farther away from the future, you know, we can all move to the new format. This is a new format, which means the sequence number is not part of key, but you cannot erase what has been done today. Sequence number is part of key. So that's some subtle difference here. So you need to, pro we need to provide a procedure with the implementation with the sequence number as a part of key. Yes, um, in the future, that's the past. Um, sequence number cannot be part of the key. But today, based on the draft, there is some implementation has the sequence number as a route key. Essentially, we will have the same route type today with the sequence number as a key and some implementation without the sequence number so the same route now you have a two route key we need to deal with this situation in the further away future yes sequence number can be removed with not be part of key once everybody is upgraded so um may i comment yeah sure Ali. so uh <clears throat> We um, moved this field to the reserve. So uh, the draft, uh, the new version of the draft is intended to say the field is reserved. So when the field is reserved, and we're going to be saying that the sender uh, needs to set it to the zero and the receiver to ignore it, if it is reserved, and then we uh, have it, uh, does it make sense to have it as part of the key if the field is reserved? Um, in the future, when it's reserved, uh, that's uh, not a part of key. I agree that that's the ultimate goal. We all on the same page. That's the goal. We need to go with that. Very yes. Good. So in, yeah. the, uh, in the short term for your implementation that you put it as part of the key, Okay, you're setting it as zero, right? I mean, the fields are zero currently because it's not in use. Are you setting it to a different value? Yeah, so Ari, this is, uh, I hear what you say. Please hear me out. This, I'm not trying to make it difficult because we are all facing the reality, right? So uh, this is uh, EVPN is a very popular technology now. So even though people come to the best uh, mailing list express uh, what they think or what they have done, not every vendor speak up, right? Every vendor's uh, implemented that. It's because uh, EVPN is, uh, is implemented by more than four vendors, right? So, so I'm just afraid uh, if uh, as a vendor, we, we don't know what they do, they will follow um, just uh, practically, they may follow what has been written in the draft so that is the um the whole idea uh, i mean for these changes and um, you know uh, and, and all the exchanges over the mailing list is take into account what has been implemented what the situation is and to come up you know, with a reasonable Solution that uh, uh, that uh, satisfies most of the requirements. And uh, if uh, we took the uh, you know uh, uh, based on the current situation of the vendor implementation, and in my email that I sent last night, I said we can call the vendors again to see where we are. Okay, 
we have uh, one vendors that has implemented it uh, uh, with the uh, with this field uh, with uh, with the existing format uh, few vendor and one vendor and that is your vendor my vendor uh, implemented it without and a couple of uh, you know few vendors uh, uh, have implemented it with the both, and then the other vendors, which I know, they basically uh, they haven't implemented it. So based on this situation, we took you know um, uh, in terms of the uh, changes, I said okay, uh, we're gonna Cisco is gonna bite the bullet, and we're gonna change our uh, implementation to remove the field uh, for the. Uh, uh, for the uh, sake of that we have the least uh, amount of the changes to the other vendors and for the sake of having the least uh, having uh, the easiest solution. So based on that, we want to just simply capture it as a reserve field, okay, and <clears throat> say that this is not part of the route key and if it is if the fields are zero, it doesn't matter to be part of the route key or not. It does makes that much of the difference. And we can pull it and see if there is any uh, vendors that, uh, if there is any vendors out there that uh, is setting it to the non-zero field or uh, not to the, or to a non-constant field. Is in Q? So may I actually have the? I guess I guess I don't see this is AC Linda from Cisco. I guess I don't see how internally using it a key is a problem unless somebody implements uh, advertises multiple in instances with different sequence numbers and doesn't want the later one to update the former one. It seems like you know people said the sequence numbers. Didn't, didn't have really any uh, functional value. So it doesn't seem like the internal usage of a key would make any difference to me. Yeah, I agree on that. I if there is about that. much, much to do about nothing, that's a moot point. You know, you don't have to change anything. And that's my point because it is a constant value. As long as it is constant value, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I agree with that. If uh, every other vendor, which I mean the vendor has not speak up, they have uh, always a constant to make it, then that's not a problem. I do agree with that. So as long as uh, that's the, the truth, then no problem, yes. And very good. So that was my point. And I'm saying that based on that, we can go with the text that we talked about is gonna be as a reserve. Okay, uh, we're gonna make it reserve. It's gonna be set to zero in the uh, sender uh, receiver ignores it. And if the sender sets it at a, as a, in a constant, doesn't matter in terms of the route key and it's gonna get ignored by the receiver anyway. I think we'll take one last comment from Jacob, then uh, we'll have to take it to list. We also have Jeff as I think in the queue. Um, okay. uh, um, it's, it's ignored on receipt. When you ignore it, um, you're not going to use it as a key, are you? Because if you use it as a key, you're not ignoring it. Um, and so that's the first point. Second thing is, um, if in future it indeed does get used, um, then we can redefine what we're going to use it for and whether or not it will be used as a key. But you're ignoring it, and if you put in a, if you put it using it as a key, you're not ignoring it. For, I, I don't see Jeff's name, but yeah, Stephen, you said Jeff. Yeah, I saw it in the chat. Jeff uh, asked, did you want to say something? Briefly, sorry, I didn't post it globally, just the teacher. Um, I, I, I think the main point to take from when uh, is that uh, I, I agree with everybody. As long as everybody's setting zero, uh, then there's basically zero interop issue. Uh, I believe when's indirect point is that uh, when we craft our text talking about this field being reserved, it's probably worth throwing in a 
sentence, maybe two, that says, you know, this needs to be zero because some implement early implementations use this as part of the key and it's for interop purposes. I think if that's done, uh, I think all of our concerns are addressed. I'm sorry, Jeff, can you please uh, repeat it? I, I believe part of Wen's point is that since some implementations treat this as the key, as long as all implementations are sending zero, we agree that we are all set. It is probably worth putting into the next version of the draft one, maybe two sentences that explain that we want it to be zero because some early implementations treated this as a key field and that it may cause interop issues if they do not. That's it. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. That's uh, what I mean. Thanks. If that's okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. So I think uh, no, just uh, one other thing. Uh, do we have John uh, on the call? That's still. Uh, if John is on, is on the call, I'd like to ask him for the sake of other people uh, that who are not on this call. Uh, John, respond to the email which I sent last night, making sure that everybody is on the, uh, is on the same page. Uh, I didn't catch everything you just said. I'm sorry. Uh, John, uh, uh, some uh, uh, not all people are on this call. So, for the sake of the people who are not on the call, if you can respond to the email that I sent last night, and uh, you know, making sure that it is clear to everybody the approach that we are taking. Sure, I'll go and take a look for it. All right, thanks. Yeah, bye. Welcome. Okay, I don't think there are any other comments uh, on this draft. Uh, so I don't know if again you are still with us or not. He did think that he is he's back. Gian, do you hear us? Again, you are mute because he did the text saying that. Okay, so last call, Gian, are you with us? So he did text me saying that, can you hear me? Gian, we can't hear you. Okay, we, we just have five minutes left. So if we can't, um, if we can't hear you, um, we will probably close the meeting. So he is dialing from phone. If we can give him a minute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can go ahead. Dial from phone, please. Hello? Jan, can you hear us? Your voice is too uh, loud. Can you please come near mic? Sound better? No, not really. How does that sound? Oh, okay, okay. Let's try. Uh, let's try this yeah. way. Uh, unfortunately, you just have five minutes. Okay. So, oh. 
Can anybody else hear the speaker? Because I can't. Hey, Gem, are you still with us? I'm sorry, we can't hear you. He is there, he's just extremely quiet. I can hear him <laughs> very, very faint, and I can hear him not hear every word. Get closer to the mic or, uh, or, or, or move the, wiggle the connections or anything on it. How is that? Is that better? Yeah, much better than the echo. So much better, except you seem to have two okay. open mics now. How's that? Is that better? A little bit of echo. We can hear you, but you have a lot of echo. Let me see. Mute one of the devices. I see. I see. Hold on. Try that. Yeah, you've got to both mute the mic and turn off the uh, the speak on on the device that you're not talking into. Yeah, let me try that. How's that? Still. Cal, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yeah, there's still some echo. Hello? Yeah. Is that better? Yes, it is. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Looks like a slight echo. Like a slight echo. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. Okay. So, so, so basically in this draft, I think what we're talking about is uh, being able to um, use RFC 5549 um, encoding to advertise the um, IPv4 and LRI via IPv6 next time. Sorry, the uh, Mac Echo is pretty bad. So, do you have two, two speakers that, are, that you are currently using? Hello? Sorry. So, so with this uh, draft, I guess the proposal is, I guess, or the idea is really to be able to um, uh, uh, advertise the IPv4 and LRI with the IPv6 next hop. So being able to um, do that on the core, on the edges primarily um, and using the uh, software mesh framework in RFC 5565, uh, tunneling six over four. Um, so with that, it's something similar to what we've done with um, with six over four, but now, now doing that over a um, four over six software. Um, uh, and and with that being able to um, utilize the BGP transport as a um, as a as a um, ability to um, uh, advertise both capabilities, so the four and six capability, uh, so you so we can eliminate the um, you know, possibly eliminate like four IPv4 peering, so you can carry both four and six address families over the one peer. I mean that's kind of really the the main crux of it. In terms of the um, RFC 5565, like tunneling six over four, and that's what we've done today. Uh, but with um, with V6 and um, having a V6 core and um, having a four over six, I guess overlay, um, being able to um, kind of I guess do the same and advert and. Um, um, be able to um, advertise the same capabilities over the um, over the six core. Um, uh, next slide. Next slide. So, so with this, so with this, uh, uh, with with the uh, four over six transport, um, what we're able to do is it's it's similar to what's done with um, a six over four transport. 
but, but now with um, four over six, you're actually at, you have your, your peering to the, uh, from the PE to the raw reflector. It is, uh, you have your, um, your SAFIs, so your type, so your VPN V4, uh, MVPN, um, the, the address families are over, are now with um, uh, IPv, so IPv4 over with an IPv6 next hop encoding for our um, RFC 5549 encoding. Um, as far as gain, uh, the big gain is really on the edges where, where you're able to use BGP as a transport and actually provide the same four and six capability over, the, over a single peer. Um, uh, please go on to the uh, next slide. So this is basically showing kind of, a, so an issue that came up and it was like a, um, in a, um, in, in a uh, presentation with uh, in the end of, I guess 2015 related to IXP's um, address space depletion um, on, on the um, exchange points where uh, IPv4, um, you, know, ad, you know, address space was being depleted and an idea was to actually use that capability and advertise build four and six um, capabilities over the peering session um, so as to eliminate the four peering. So you could just really have one peer, so a single peer on the edge. Um, ne next slide. So what, that, so what that would look like is you would actually have a single peer, would be a single V6 peer. So similar to how we do, let's say with our PE to route reflector peer and where we stack all the SAFIs, we're now, we're now taking the um, v, V6 NRL, and v, sorry, the V4 NRL, LRI and advertising that capability over the six peer as well. So, so now both four and six prefixes and LRI are advertised and now you're using that same V6 next hop for both four and six. Um, what this does is it really, and it's really for enterprises and service providers, you're able to uh, eliminate uh, V4 peering at the edge. And that's, that's really the, the big gain uh, with this raft and possible like OPEX savings and managing your, uh, your V6 peering, V4 peering at the edge. Um, next, next slide. So this is a typical uh, V4 core, and this is like six, six over four. So here you have all the address family SAFIs, like uh, V4, uh, V6, V6, and they're all, uh, the SAFIs are over a four peer. Um, so this, this is a typical six to four um, software framework where you're tunneling these six, tra six traffic, so uh, VPN, V6, and MVPN over a four core. Uh, next, next slide. Next slide. Sorry, this, this slide's okay. So, so in this slide, this is kind of existing as well. So this is uh, takes with with IPv4, I, I, IPv6 islands over an IPv6 core, and here we actually have IPv6 NRI with IPv4 next top, um, where you're doing you're using uh, BGPLU for six PE labeling your. Uh, V6 prefixes with a V4 next hop um, using that same RFC 5549 encoding for the um, next hop. Um, next slide. Next slide. Uh, yeah, so this is it. Sorry. So, um, so this is a V6 core. So now this is with the software mesh framework with four over a, over a six core. With, with VPN, and in this in this scenario, we're taking all the SAFIs, and so on the PE to uh, to RR peering, all the SAFIs are carried. So in here, there's the gain here is um, it's it's still the same as going uh, six over a four core, but now it's four over six core. So you you just are um, at keeping all the same the same SAFIs, but now over a six next top. So yeah. All your IPv4 and V6 NRL, and LRI are over an IPv6 desktop. Um, but then when you look at the edges on the PEC edges customer, that, that's where really the major gain is with this raft and the OPEX savings and possible uh, you know, uh, management savings where you're able to eliminate your V4 peering by advertising your, uh, your uh, four capability 
over over that same six peers. So both four and six MLRI are advertised over the peers, and that's and that's really at the edges of the network where where now you have that um, address savings for V4, and everything can be completely V6. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. So this is actually the island scenario. So it's the same uh, scenario that we have with 6PE, but with four. So this is actually going with a, with a soft wire uh, mesh framework, four over six core, where your, um, your V4, um, your V your V four MLRI is now is now um, lit, is um, BGPLU so lit, it's um, labeled unicast over over six core tunneled with the um, uh, soft wired mesh framework. Um, but in this case as well, so that's that's very similar to the six to four with six P. But now we're just going over of uh, four over six core. So in this as well, basically the same savings is um, on the PEC edge, where where we can now really eliminate your four peering. Um, so this this use case is really for both. So this this one and the previous one uh, with the service provider or an enterprise, whether you're doing six PE or VPN v four, VPN v six, and the core, the core side doesn't change as much, and it doesn't change that you have the same number of SAFIs of over a V6 peer with your PE to R peering. But really the big gain is actually at the edge. And that's where you know your BGP transport, you're advertising the four capability over the uh, six peer um, with, with the V6 next top per RC 5549. And now and now you're able to really eliminate all of your uh, four peering. So um, any any questions or, or comments? I don't see it in queue. Okay. Okay, so we are done with uh, with the meeting. Um, so we don't know yet if we will see each other in uh, in Madrid. It will depend on uh, uh, the country conditions and so on. But um, in case there is no meeting um, in Spain, uh, we will organize another interim meeting. Thanks a lot, and if you haven't signed the uh, blue sheet on Etherpad, please uh, please do it. Thank you.